the monarchs, they have like abilities like they had in the old game. But we've introduced a system called monarch power. And this is really the power you use to make the big decisions. It's really going to drive the game. And, and so, right, you want to storm a fortress, you, you use the power. You want to get a core, you buy that with power. Uh, you want to buy a tech, you buy that with power. And I mean, if you play the game, you realize that this is a, a buying text for something else than the sliders is a fairly big change. And this gives so many interesting effects, right? It becomes a bit more easier to see. I mean, the game becomes more about decisions and less about nudging a slider and trying to foresee like how the percentages are moving. Mm -hmm. um, and you also get these short-term decisions versus long-term decisions where, you know, should I build, I mean, you pay power to build buildings. Uh, should I build buildings in all places? Should I go for the tech? You're going to see that lots of interesting things are going to come out of the gameplay and for good reasons for this. It gives an interesting ebb and flow to the game, right? We want to get away from this. This, you know, you, you go up, you, you have, say you're a military country, right? You build more troops, build more troops, and all of a sudden you can win all the wars and, and you can just stop playing. Right? Instead, you have like a great military leader, like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Gustavo Adolfus, for example, right? Uh, and he would go. He would do military reforms. He would, you know, get more military tech. He would outmaneuver his enemies with his skill. But then he dies, and in comes another monarch who happens to have a good administrative ability, but not very good military power. So what happens then is that you geared your country. You used your country's strength to conquer people on the battlefield, and you will still keep the armies and the reforms and all these kind of things. But mm -hmm. the way you can approach the challenge of the game changes because. You, you no longer have all the flexibility to keep pushing your military advantage, even if you still have what you had. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have to use your administrative advantage to sort of improve governance, ideas, and these kind of things, right? Or you just get some monarch who is an idiot where you now have to, you know, use your, your strength to fight, like, rebellions and... Mm -hmm. and, and struggle for a bit. So you should never really reach this plateau where you know that no, for the rest of the game, I will keep clicking this button until I win. We, you should not have that.